Hi coaches, uh, I'm really, really honored and excited to have Dr. Mark Howard on the uh, next interview that I've got for you guys exclusively for this group. Um, the reason I chose Mark to interview was because Mark has had a profound impact on the way that I share the principles with my coaching clients. And Mark did a, a three-day event with um, Jamie Smart in London about three years ago, probably probably longer than that, three and a half years ago. And I had the um, opportunity to, to listen to what Mark had to say over those three days. And it was very, very simple, as, as a lot of really profound things are. And from that moment, I, I listened to this last year, my coaching completely changed, my impact completely changed with clients. Um, I connected better with people. I started creating more clients. I started making more money. All really, really good stuff. And I hadn't heard anyone else explain it as eloquently and concisely um, as Mark has. So we don't have three days, but but we do have about an hour. And I'm I'm hoping to to bring that out from from a conversation with Mark. So Mark, really glad to have you here with us today. Oh, thank you so much. I, I enjoy being here. Thanks for having me. So um, the audience for this for this video, as, as I explained before, yeah. is, is really a group of three principles, practitioners, facilitators, um, for coaches, really, people who are who are working with clients. And there were basically two things that you, you spoke about uh, mm -hmm. from what I what I heard. And, and may, maybe we'll just talk about those two things. Maybe we'll, we'll we'll add other stuff. But the first thing that you spoke about was was rapport and getting into rapport with the person you are sharing the principles with. And that really, really spoke to me. And, and I've shared this so often with other coaches, with other people since then, because it's so obvious when you know, but we, we all, uh, well, I say we all, I'll talk for myself. There's so many times when I found myself trying to share someone, share the principles with someone or coach them, and, and I'm and not having any rapport with them. And so could you just talk a bit about what, what you mean about getting into rapport with people when, when you're sharing these principles? Sure. You know, I'd be glad to. Uh, and you can uh, help me making sure that I hit the, share the points that were um, impactful to you. Um, so um, I, I think rapport or being in connection with your clients is essential for the three principles. I mean, other coaching approaches or mental health counseling approaches, they have different ranges of how important they view rapport. But um, I think it's essential. And the reason is because um, you need to have a, a feeling of connection with this human being that you're uh, wanting to help with the principles, but really, the whole thing is all about uh, it being a level playing field that this human being has within them the knowledge of the principles. It's already there. And I think that's one of the elements of our understanding of the principles that allows us to deepen our rapport because we're speaking heart to heart with, uh, with this person, or with our clients or with the group because everybody there, uh, whether it's a, a an individual or a group already um, is connected to the spiritual energy and has the knowledge of the principles. And knowing that, I think, puts you into a deep rapport. But rapport to me is, is being heart to heart. Uh, it's the feeling of love and understanding that you're sitting in. Um, it's in a way getting your own personal thinking about this other person out of the way. And, um, those are kind of the elements of, of rapport. But the other essential point is that you're making it safe, psychologically safe for this person to sit with you. Because, you know, if this person's coming to you for coaching or mental health counseling, they're struggling with something. And so the rapport allows them to, you want them to feel safe, uh, that, you, that they can relax with you. So um, I was just talking with another three principles uh, coach the other day, and I was talking about, you know, just having a, you're just, you're just with a friend. 
that's really what it is. It's not like you're gonna you may you may have friendship. It's not that you have friendship with this person, but it's like talking to a friend. And so you're taking care of them. You're inquiring about how, what they're uh, you know what's what's difficult for them and what they're having trouble with. The image for me that kind of helps is um, you know if you've ever had like a social dinner at your house with your friends. Yeah. Or you, you know you've had a dinner and. You've invited a new friend who knows nobody else. I'm sure that in your heart, you want to take care of this new friend and make them feel comfortable. You know, you're not just going to open the door and say, hey, just go introduce yourself around. You know, I'll be in the kitchen. I'm still cooking. You know, you're not going to you're going to take care of that friend. So that's kind of the feeling you want for your coaching clients. But I think the ingredients. Uh, that three principles coaches have is knowing that that human being has already all the knowledge they need. And all we're doing is our best to try to wake that up. And knowing that puts you in rapport. I don't think you, you I, I don't think you can really share the principles with impact without it. And sometimes, um, you're you're trying to get rapport and it's taking a couple of sessions. Sometimes it takes a while to get the rapport depending upon the kind of client you have. But you need to have the rapport before you go into sharing anything about the principles because without it, that person is just not going to hear you. They're just not going to be in a place of their own state of mind where they'll be open to hearing what you have to say. Yeah, I, so I, I, I hope that helps. Yeah, and I, I'm getting really curious, Mark, listening to you because I guess as, as my experience has, has evolved since I first heard this about rapport, and this just has come to me now as, as I'm talking to you, is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because when I first heard you use the word rapport, it was very soft, very gentle, very nice, and, and that was helpful. It was helpful rather than me trying to hold still while I tell you about the principles, don't, you know, don't leave, right? You know, it's a completely different energy. And and what I found um, more recently has been that actually that manifests to me as, as love. And I've got a lot more comfortable in that word love. And through that word love, I found that I can be a little bit more tough with with clients through through that place of love. And as I'm listening to you, I'm, I'm kind of reflecting on it, and I'm thinking I would still see that as rapport. So I've, I, when I've got when I've got rapport with someone, when I've um, when I'm connected with them, when I'm loving them from my heart, I can say to them, "Hey, you know, this this isn't." And I can't. I'm, I'm trying to think of something now, but you know, may, maybe not just being so gentle that it's not helpful to them. Saying it from something that's helpful to them. Um, through that connection. I don't know if I'm making sense. Well, you are. I think that's a nice point to share because I think that moves to um, our having um, thoughts about rapport. And I think rapport really uh, is us trying to describe this feeling of connection you could make. And I think it's spiritual because, you know, Everyone is part of the principles. Everybody is part of mine. So when your coaching client sits in front of you, you are already connected. The only thing that makes it look like you're not connected is either your thinking or the other person's mm -hmm. thoughts, right? So rapport is really getting yourself into a consciousness where you have this feeling of connection. Uh, the energy that you already are connected to is there manifesting. Now, that, does, that has no quality to it, like well, good rapport or bad rapport, or you can't mm. do this or you can't do that. The main, the main um, sense is where your feeling is. You know, if you lose the feeling of love and understanding, for mm. example, what you're calling love or understanding, if you lose that feeling, then you're out of rapport. So, yeah. um, but what you say and how you say it um, you, there's no limits in terms of what you can say. You can be what people might consider tough with somebody, or you can broach a subject that the person is very insecure about, or you can point out 
something that uh, you notice uh, that's getting in their way that, um, I don't know, they could take offense with. But the rapport protects you. Hmm. See, the rapport protects you. Now, what you say, that's coming from your wisdom. You noticing that you need to be a little tough here or you need to be gentler or you need to stop sharing to just kind of keep the rapport deeper hmm. or you're losing rapport. That's coming from your listening piece. But the rapport itself is a deep uh, uh, spiritual energy. That, and, you know, I'm just putting words on what it what the feeling is, mm -hmm. because you want to keep noticing the feeling you monitor that feeling because this is the most important thing to keep going is the feeling you have in the room with your group or with your clients. But that rapport doesn't tell you how you speak or where, you know, mm -hmm. or, or what you're going to share. That comes more from the listening piece, which is the, the wisdom guiding you. So yeah, you can, uh, you can have a whole range of ways that you're going to speak to your client about something you saw, you know, that you think could be helpful for them. Uh, but you, but again, you know, if you're speaking to something that's, they're, that's going to be more personal to them, then you really have to be careful with the report. You have to really monitor it. So that if you say it and you could see that they get defensive in the report, you're losing rapport, you got to go back, get the rapport and then come back and say your, say what you were sharing again. Does that help? Absolutely. You know, I, I, and I love that you brought in the fact that this is spiritual because it kind of brings it full circle back to, back to love and understanding. And, and I've kind of found that for myself in a way, and I'm, and I'm sure I'm going to, I'm never going to stop learning about this, but before I had very much a, an intellectual understanding of love, understanding, rapport, these words, and through experience and showing up and, and having my own insights, that's kind of felt a bit deeper. And, and yeah, my, my experience completely relates to that of coming from that place, that feeling what, what comes up my mouth is, is not irrelevant. It's just, it's fit for purpose. And, but it, but you're right. It is. You said it far more eloquently than I would. It's 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 where it's where I'm coming from. It's where we're coming from that that creates that impact. You you mentioned you mentioned um, listening. Could you, and I and I remember now uh, again the the audio that I that I heard last year. You, you talked a lot about listening, and again, listening is one of those words that people have their own yeah. understanding of it. Yeah. What, what do you mean by listening? So, um, um, okay, so listening uh, is now for me way beyond any idea of what that word could mean, you know. Uh, it's way beyond uh, um, uh, what we typically mean by that, like listening to a content of what someone's saying to us and see if we're if it makes sense to us, it's this um, kind of really broad uh, place where you are so present that uh, you're not really uh, at all listening to yourself. You're you're there, kind of with the feeling of beyond yourself. You're not there in your consciousness, so to speak. But what? But you're really hearing the humanness of that person. And, um, and, um, and so then you can really get a feel for what this person's up against. And it kind of leads me to uh, wonder about what people are saying. That comes up for me, wonder, or I get curious, or uh, I, sometimes I'm puzzled, you know, uh, for example, somebody will say, well, I really got what you're saying about the principles, man. I really got it. So this week, you know, I really worked at changing my thinking. I really kind of kept practicing how to change my thinking, you know. So I'm puzzled there. I'm puzzled. Like, that, you know, I, I know that's not tr tr the true understanding of the principles. So I get, I'm puzzled by that. 
But the feel, it's a conscious state. Listening is really a, a state of consciousness. Maybe it's another way of saying it. Where you are not there. And what I mean by that is um, I, be, I, I get there by thinking things like, um, oh, my God, um, this is a long session and I got to do grocery shopping at the end of the session. Or, <laughs> you know, this person's really going to be difficult. Or, mm -hmm. man, you know, I've just shared a few things. It's going nowhere. What's up with this? You know, so mm -hmm. that's what I mean by being yeah. there or not being there. Um, and if I'm honest, but, I've probably thought a number of those things as well. And well, everybody does. Yeah. Everybody does. But it's this recognition mm -hmm. that um, it's the recognition that you're list you're you're bringing yourself in the room again, and to quiet that out, clear that out, and go back to this state of listening. So for me, a session has a lot of adjustments in it. So it's not that I'm perfectly in a state of listening where I'm not in the room, mm -hmm. but I make adjustments around that, knowing that when you listen this way and find this state, you the intelligence that you are a part of, again, mine, speaks to you. So you don't really have to do any of the work. I mean, it occurs to you. It, things will occur to you, even, even getting curious or wondering or um, asking a question or, you know, um, uh, reining in your teaching. Like, you know, there are times it's occurred to me, oh, my God, you're teaching way beyond, way too much or mm -hmm. way beyond what you know. So there's a lot that you will get guided by. Uh, this wisdom, our intelligence, we're all a part of. And it's this connection you've made to this other uh, consciousness, this other human being or this group, that in that, the intelligence is working in both of you, in both of you. Because you see, it's not the words you're going to share that does anything. Somehow the feeling from where you're coming from wakes up something in this other human being, and they get it. So that's a very brief um, description of the listening piece. You know, there's a lot to this. Um, and you know what? I, I did an audio on it. If you'd like me to send it to you, on Kish, so then you can send it out to your people. I'd oh, that would be very, that. very um, generous of you. Yeah, if yeah. you wouldn't mind. Yeah. But you know, see. Um, See, so you can see it's essential if we go back to rapport. Mm -hmm. No matter what you, you've seen that you think is going to be valuable to share, the rapport makes you impactful. The, the re rapport allows your, the best chances for somebody to hear something when you share from this understanding that you have found. Um, so it's essential. But again, the rapport is in this deep feeling. Now, I'm not saying, you know, you're like you're falling in love. I'm just saying you're in that feeling that we're calling love, but it's this feeling of just deep respect and honor. There's all kinds of words for it, uh, as, as well as this feeling of connection to a human being, that they're in the human condition, just like you. We've got a lot of new coaches um, we've also got a lot of experienced coaches who are new to the principles in, in the group. And I know when I first kind of heard about listening and rapport, I guess one of my questions was, I know this is an area I need to really work on. I know this is an area that I'm, uh, I'm not great at. And if I look back, I don't know what I've done, but I know my listening's got better and I know that there's a way to go. I know my understanding of rapport's got better through experience and there's a way to go. So if there's someone who's new to the principles or new to sharing this, or even someone who's experienced, what what advice would you give them? Is it just a case of, well, just just be aware that this is there and, and go out and teach as best you know? Or is this something that people can do to cultivate better listening or cultivate deeper rapport with people? Well, you know, first of all, um, I think that... Um, it's beautiful that 
anyone here on the call has been touched by the principles and had some insight, something, some glimpse of the principles. I think that's just beautiful and that you want to share them and be more impactful. I uh, just uh, really, really love that and, and honor that. I think be yourself. You know, another thing about this whole thing about around rapport is like being human. Be yourself. Don't think of yourself as having anything or as an expert in any way. Don't put anything on yourself. Just sit with someone and be yourself. If humor is you, be humorous. Don't try to stop it, you know. But you, you know, if you're humorous and you see that it's really, you know, it's really, you know, not, not, it's really disconnecting you from other people. Well, then you got to make adjustments, you know. Uh, but, but I think that's the first thing is be yourself. And I think the other piece is um, when I start a session, uh, I try to find a quiet place in me where I'm in the feeling of what I know. Like, I don't really think of what I know about the principles, but I just try to get into the feeling of that understanding. If I, if that makes sense to you, or I just yeah, try to get into, I just try to get into the feeling of being of service. That's another piece. So I really get myself somewhere that I don't do that 24 seven in my daily life. You know, I, I wish I could, I just don't because I'm in the human condition, but here I see it as my job um, because I'm being of service to human beings who want to understand something about life. So that might help be yourself. Now, the only thing that gets in the way of our being ourselves is thinking, Oh man, I should be better than I am. Or, you know, we get these thoughts about ourselves, but if we can let that go and just be ourselves with somebody you're right into halfway there to rapport, to building rapport. And then I really do work at starting my day in my office in the feeling of this understanding. And when I'm with someone, I just cultivate that feeling. It's not active. It's just there. So when I know it's gone, you know, like I take something personal a person has said or you know, all those kinds of things that we do as, you know, human beings with thought, I have to adjust back to that feeling. And that brings in the rapport, my way of developing rapport. So um, I'll, I'll just give you a, a real brief story about this. My son is in Los Angeles, California, and he works with very, very seriously, emotionally troubled young adults. And when he started in the clinic, nobody was showing up for appointments. So he was calling this one 19-year-old kid, and it dawned on him as he was in the rapport, it dawned on him, maybe we'll go play video games. So he, there, in L.A., in Los Angeles, there are a couple of public places where you can play video games. So he just said, hey, why don't we meet at this such and such a place on video games? Do you like video games? And the kid said, yeah, I do. So they, that's, where he, that's where he met the kid and he got in rapport. They just were human hanging out, playing video games. The feeling came in while they were doing that. The feeling came in of connection. The kid, the 19-year-old, relaxed his mind. The feeling came in. And then my son could say something about thought. Kid's talking about his life. The kid opened up. He says, have you ever considered this? So that's it. It's just, you see, there's no structure. It's human to human. Be yourself. So I, I, so I just wanted to come back there and share that with all of you. And I hope that made sense to you. No, I, I, I really like that, Mark. And um, it seems really genuine and seems really real. And I know one word that seems to be banded around a lot in, in the coaching circles you know, outside of the 3P world is, is the word authenticity. And when you were talking about be you, be yourself, what, what kind of came to mind was, well, if you are yourself, then authenticity kind of happens. It's not something you do. It's just when you let go of everything that's in the way of those thoughts, then what shows up is yourself. And one thing that I've been realizing for, for me and 
I tell other coaches is, you know, you're already good enough. You, 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 you are enough. That's what the principles point to. So just go and be with someone else. Cause, because when we try, you're right. When you try and be an expert, and I, oh God, I used to do that too, kind of cringe thinking about it and showing up in that way. There is no authenticity. There is no rapport. There's people think you can't help them. Whereas when you're like, well, I'm just a flawed human being like you. It, it, it's different. It seems to connect better with people. Well, yeah, you know, I also think that there's a grain of truth, you know, in authenticity. There's a grain of truth, and it's kind of like what we're speaking to. But to try to aim for that is like you're doomed for failure. Like I remember in my uh, – I used to be trained in existential psychotherapy in the late 70s. They were talking about authenticity. Every time I thought about trying to be authentic, I wasn't authentic, you know, because I was working at it. Now, this is this is like, don't try to be anything. Uh, that's what I say a lot, too, in terms of, of you all feeling comfortable sharing what you know, because the minute you do, uh, you're in it. You're in you're in this uh, nothingness. You're in this this uh, neutral energy. Uh, but the minute you start thinking about yourself teaching, then you're out of it. You know, you're, you're there thinking about, oh, I can't teach it like so-and-so or, you know, this other person. Oh, man, they say so much. I only know this one little thing. Uh, but as long as you are with someone in this, what we're calling rapport, and you're yourself, people will, will, will uh, open up to you. And I learned this through the years, you know, I learned this through the years as I moved from being an expert, this psychologist, to being a three principles person, huh? And this is it, is that I'm just myself. You know, I, I don't do too much with metaphors. I talk a lot about myself with all of my clients. Um, and I will in the room apologize for getting lost. Uh, you know, I said, oh, geez, I'm sorry, you know, I... I got caught up in stuff here. I just started thinking about stuff. Sorry about that. Let's go back. Where were we? Um, so, but, you know, you could call that authentic, but um, all it is is, um, all it is is just you being who you are. And when we think about ourselves being a certain way, then we can't be who we are. Again, you know, this is with responsibility, right? It's the responsibility that you are a coach. You know, you're not going to uh, uh, dating. You're not going to date this person. You know what I mean? But you are yourself as much as you can be yourself in that session. You just don't think about how to be. <laughs> when we think about how to be, we get in our way. But if we draw up how to be and just live in that feeling I talked about earlier, you're going to be fine because you'll feel when that's gone, right? You'll just notice, oh my God, you get up tight or you just notice that you're feeling differently than, you know, that feeling of rapport. So then you just drop whatever's on your mind and go back to the feeling, connect back with that person. I always connect back I always check in all the time, you know, I'm saying, well, how is this for you? Is this making sense? I mean, it's not techniques, but it's just been my way to, excuse me, make sure the connection is still there for them too. Yeah, no, that's, that's um, <clears throat> a very good point. It's something that I, I, I I'm just thinking about, I, I, I do that too. And, it's funny because I remember reading or watching something somewhere else, a coaching thing, or a, you, should, you know, never say, are you okay? Never check in with a client because it doesn't make you sure. But I've, I've found that, like you've said, it's not a technique. It's just what makes sense in the moment. And um, it's, it's, it's worked for me. So, uh, no, I, I, I really like that. Well, the only reason it works is because it's like, it's coming from your genuineness. And if it comes as a strategy, it does. It isn't as powerful. But, but if it comes from being genuinely interested in, did what I just say to you make any sense at all? Uh, then it's 
it just comes out, you know. Or if it really makes sense to you to stay connected to the person and to check out from time to time with that other person, if they're still connected, you know, then it makes sense to do something like that. But it's certainly not can't be a strategy because then it loses its power you know it loses its uh, genuineness that's how it comes out for me you know because sometimes you know I get uh, carried away uh, in a session I just get so thrilled by what I'm saying that uh, I've got to check you know like I'm wondering oh my god did this person follow me you know <laughs> so I check it out I'm checking out the rapport so that's how I do it but it's just it, it it, it'll come your way. It'll come your way if you see that it's valuable to know if the rapport's still there. That's all. That's all that is, you know. And what I see as the work when you're in the coaching is that it's kind of a dance, really. It's a dance between um, you listening, having rapport and listening, something coming to you, and you share it, and then it's back to listening. See? It just... It's just always this kind of dance of you share something you've seen, then you listen. And um, that's kind of how I formulated it. So, so I, you know, I just found that things come up that help me get back to listening. <laughs>